It has been two weeks into the phase two heightened alert. Since then, the COVID-19 situation uh, have gradually come under control. Although we are still seeing about 100 cases a day, the number of uh, serious cases have remained stable. We are also making good progress on our vaccination program. As of uh, yesterday, about two-thirds of our population has received two doses of COVID-19 vaccines ahead of National Day. We are now in a stronger position to resume our, with our reopening journey, but in a cautious and calibrated way. We will do that in stages. We will start with a preparatory stage from 10th August. This will take about a month or so, and when 80% of our population has received full vaccination, and if all goes well, we will begin our transition stage towards a COVID-resilient nation. And this will be done, as I said, in stages two. Today, we will focus on what we plan to do uh, during the preparatory stage over the next few weeks. We will need to take a differentiated approach as there is still a sizable population of our, a sizable proportion of our population that, that is yet to be fully vaccinated. And we will need to safeguard their health, in particular, the elderly. From 10th of August, we will relax the safe management measures for higher risk mask off activities and large scale events. Up to five individuals can dine together at the FMB establishments in a group if all of them have either been fully vaccinated or tested negative. For hawker centres and coffee shops, as they are generally open, naturally ventilated spaces, up to two persons can dine together in a group regardless of vaccination state status. Being a small and open economy, our international connectivity is vital. As vaccination rates in Singapore and in other countries increase, we will progressively review some of our border measures. From 20th August, more travellers from selected countries will be allowed to serve their stay-home notices at their place of residence, subject to certain criteria. From 10th August, we will also approve more entry applications for work pass holders, as long as they are fully vaccinated. They will also be required to keep to the existing travel requirements. Even though vaccination may not prevent infection, our studies have shown that vaccination reduces the risk of severe disease. This will prevent our healthcare facilities from being overwhelmed and vaccination will also allow us to confidently continue with our daily activities and minimize disruption to our work. Moving forward, we will require vaccination or regular testing for all workers in selected sectors, such as those that require interaction with the vulnerable or with customers in high-risk settings, particularly those with mask-off environment. This is to protect them and their colleagues given the environment they are working in. The public service will lead by example in this. For those who have not been vaccinated, I would encourage you to do so as soon as possible. We have seen a strong take-up rate from our seniors in recent weeks. I want to thank them for stepping forward. But if your parents or grandparents have yet to be vaccinated, please continue to reach out to them and encourage them to do so. Vaccination is the best way to keep our loved ones safe. Before I end, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Singaporeans and Singapore businesses. It has been an ext extremely challenging period for many of you. We are deeply appreciative of your cooperation and your support. Let us continue to press on so that we can move decisively <coughs> to a COVID-resilient nation. Thank you very much.